Hey there, how's it going? Well, I want to clarify some things from my last video, and the Alrightus guitarist asked some pretty good questions. And uh, I'm just going to be reading my responses to his questions, because I thought they were good, and I thought my responses were good. So, anyway, his words are being used against other people. Well, if he's spreading misinformation, then that must be corrected. Conversely, if his statements are accurate, I see no particular issue. Someone may take offense to the truth, but that is not a rational objection. Therefore, we have to determine whether what he's saying is true or untrue. Since you didn't bother to provide any examples, no conclusion can be drawn until you do so. Further, you're starting to sound a bit Shivesian. Are you saying that creators are responsible for what their followers do? Well, Baring watches your channel. You must be responsible for his actions, videos, opinions, etc., right? Certainly, we must assume that you agree with all of Baring's opinions unless you explicitly state otherwise. Clearly, that was a touch of devil's advocacy, but I hope you take the point. And I did. I said, yes, creators have a responsibility for what they say. If people were using the things that I say in a negative way against others, I would try to make a change in what I say and the way that I've said it. It's the primary reason why I've taken down some of my videos when I realized how they could be used. Why is it wrong to label him as being against those groups of people? You've made videos opposing the concept of non-binary identities. Is it wrong to label you as being against those groups of people? Kind of biased in the wording, isn't it? Seems like there might be a touch more nuance in the conversation, after all. Yes, if people were to word that I'm against non-binary identities, it would be a fair assessment whether or not it was completely accurate. Of course there's more nuance, but as a general, it's something I would expect people to think about my, my position on the surface. Um, those things are not proof that he doesn't have a problem with those groups of people. It's congratulations, you just made another God of the Gaps argument, because we've had this discussion before, you dodged it the last time, but I have to let you know that you're doing it again. The absence of evidence is not evidence. Saying there's no proof that he doesn't have a problem with some groups is not proof that he does have a problem with those groups. And Well, I, I never said that, but I, I don't know why people, like, you know, whatever. Uh, you're drawing a conclusion that you can't logically draw. All you can conclude is that he may or may not be a racist, sexist, misogynist, Teletubby enthusiast, etc. I agree with that. I agree with, 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 with this last sentence right here. I agree. And I rep res responded by saying, um, this doesn't prove that he's any one thing or another. All it does is not prove that he's not one thing or another. Someone saying that they have X friends or that they like having sex with X does not translate to them having no problem with X. It's saying that there's no proof either way. So again, I, I agreed with his last, uh, you know, uh, this last sentence. So... Uh, that's how dishonest people have discussions. And he goes, you are no better than they are, They, if you refuse to provide evidence of your claims. You are being dishonest in the very same fashion. If I'm having a discussion about a larger subject, I see no reason to obsess over things that don't add to the conversation. If there's proof against the larger subject, then fine. But if I'm talking about prejudices and double standards as a general, then asking for proof that specific people are definitively this or that is not helpful or fruitful to the discussion. Just as going on about whether the sky is really blue is not helpful to the discussion about how colors affect people's moods. Okay, I'm not going to take any time to prove someone is bigoted because that is subjective. Dude, we've had this discussion before. You're refuting your own point. By saying that something is subjective, you just admitted that you're not dealing in objective fact. We're not dealing with obj an objective fact. Yet you treat this belief as objective fact. I, I don't really, but... Uh, this is exactly the same type of argument that creationists use. It's hinging on argumentum ad populum. Uh, people generally agree with this, thus it's true. As a way to avoid providing uh, evidence of your claim. If you accept this, you should accept that God is real, Alex Jones is honest, and Full House is great television. It's clearly bullshit, but what you're saying boils down to... Things are what I say they are because they are. That's weak sauce. I, 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 if that's what I was doing, that would be indeed weak sauce. So I say, I'm not treating the belief as an objective fact. I'm saying that I, that I want to have a discussion about the larger subject. If I'm having a discussion with a creationist and they want to discuss that they don't think this, this, all this happened at random, then we could discuss different ways that 
things things could have happened in a non-random way or discussed why it actually can be random. But I'm not going to state that it abs- that is absolutely not random. I'm just going to talk about different possibilities. I can have con- dis- uh, I can have discussions or conversations with sandy hoaxers about the validity of mainstream media, provided they don't make absolute claims that certain things were hoaxes. If it sticks to the validity of mainstream media, there can still be a conversation. There are ways that that a discussion can still happen. Uh, I'm not going to change my views based on your name calling, nor should you, poopy head. However, you should change your views if they were shown to be wrong or that your evidence is incorrect or inadequate. Of course, you didn't provide any evidence, so it's kind of hard to say. Bazing! And I said yes. Ratcheting up the requirement of proof, the more proof I give. We're hitting all the classics today. I've, we've talked about this one too. Could it be that something you consider proof is not proof to another? Religious people think the Bible is proof positive for God. Those of us who don't have a pre-existing belief thinks it's, think it's a big diaper bomb. I've certainly never asked for infallible evidence, just go to all reliable evidence, or any evidence at all. Yeah, anything. I said, if the discussion is purely about the existence or non-existence of a god, then yes, evidence is necessary. But if, if the discussion is about spirituality in general, then no, proof of God is not necessary to, uh, t- uh, not a necessary thing to have that discussion. There's a general consensus that something is bigoted. That's the context I'm discussing things in. I can't believe it's not right-wing nuttery. Yes, and the Nazis held a general consensus that, that Jews were evil, and that's the context they discuss things in. Nothing wrong there. Clearly a consensus makes things true. And with, uh, you know, some sarcasm there. I said, I've had discussions with Nazis before, and I've said, okay, let's assume you're right about this. How does that affect X? If that's never said, then there's no actual attempts for a conversation. There are ways that people who have radically different views, who may not ever be able to prove to the other side that their views are true, There are ways that people can have conversations still about important subjects that revolve around some of the the people's views, whatever those views are. Yet one has to make an attempt to have a conversation. But if the only thing that someone wants to do is the equivalent of going on and on about whether the sky is really blue... Uh, when someone is just trying to have a discussion about how colors affect people's moods, yeah, that's that's not actually trying to have a conversation, you know. And that's the shit that pisses me off. That's the shit that I'm I'm just not going to deal with. If you're showing that you're you're willing to have a conversation, you're willing to talk about stuff, whether or not uh, you believe that that uh, part of someone's premise is true or not, you know. If, if you're actually willing to have a conversation, great. But if your whole thing is, well, I'm going to spend all of my try- time trying to uh, get you to prove this one little aspect of, of your beliefs, then yet yeah, that's not a conversation. That's as, that's as fruitless as most of these great debates between atheists and theists. There, there's, there's just no point. Nobody's trying to find any any common ground. Nobody's trying to find anything that they agree on. Everything's about, um, well, you need to prove this or I'm not going to look at anything you're saying. Now, again, if if things are being framed in, in such a way where, you know, I mean, if someone's argument is, well, God exists, well, fine, you know, ask, ask for the proof. But again, if there's if there's like a, just a general discussion about spirituality, how it affects people, uh, it's it's if it's it's how it has, uh, what kind of effect it has had in history, or people are discussing different possibilities of of how things are, then you know one doesn't need to prove that God exists in order to have a discussion about spirituality. It's just not necessary. And if that, and if someone wants to make it necessary, it's it's I I don't know how to, how to to word that other than I mean it's kind of being rather extremist, isn't it? You know, what kind of common ground can people have to where they can have a discussion where they actually gain something from it? And I think that's important. 
I want to have discussions. I don't want to have some, just something where people are just trying to prove, uh, prove each other wrong. I want to gain perspective. That's my reason for having a discussion, is to gain perspective. Um, if I was in it for other reasons, I wouldn't be trying to have a conversation. I'd be just looking things up and finding out whether or not something is true or not. You know, I'd be trying to find look up facts. Okay, I don't want a conversation with an encyclopedia. I want a conversation with a person. A person who has viewpoints, a person who has nuance, a person, you know, who's a person, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's my thing. And the moment someone wants to, to no longer make this about a conversation with people is the moment I, I kind of want to drop out of the conversation, you know? Now, again, I'm going to say it one more time. If the things that I'm saying are like, if like my entire argument is, well, Milo is a, is a racist. Milo is a racist. Okay, yeah, then, then I'm going to have to prove that Milo is a racist in order to, to, to continue on anything. But that's not my argument. That's not been my argument. I'm trying to talk about the larger subject of bigotry and racism and how it affects people and what can be done about it. So, anyway. 